Hey, hey, hey! It's me, RJB, and today I have a replay for you between Mom and Hamburger Sasu. This should be some good stuff. Both players are pretty damn close to each other here on the map. We've got Mom here on the orange turn on the middle right off the map on spot number 3 and spot number 5. We have Hamburger Sasu right below him playing the blue Rodos. A uh, quick little overview of the two players. Hamburger Sasu is a very quick player with very high EAPM. He has great micro macro. He has great insight into the game and he has a lot of diverse methods to beating his opponent. Whereas Mong is a pro player from the regular maps and he is a pretty accomplished pro player at that. And he is a Terran main and he's playing Terran right here. And he's probably the best Terran on fastest map out of all the Terrans that exist on fastest map. He has a lot of experience accumulated over the past year by playing against players like Brain, Lucky Back, Minchul, and of course Hamburger Sasu against Voss, Lee Boku, and a lot of other big names within the 1 vs 1 fastest map seen in Korea. And yeah, this should be interesting to watch. I'm kind of curious to see who is going to come out on top right here. Looks like Mong is starting off with a regular standard build order. Uh, he's going for, of course, the three barracks is there, and then, of course, followed up by a command center depots here on the bottom side, although that is a little bit close to Hamburger Sasu. But he started those depots before knowing where Hamburger Sasu was located, which does put these depots at risk in the case Hamburger Sasu wants to fly stuff over right past the hill and pretty much abuse this little portion there. <laughs> oh, sorry, a hiccup. But Hamburger Sasu is at the moment being contained within his base and he has not yet scouted Mong's base, so he doesn't yet know where Mong is located and he doesn't yet know what Mong is up to. So he is going for an all out cannon wall here to defend himself against an incoming marine push, of course, with some medics in the mix as well. Tank factory there already on the way there for Mong. Hamburger Sasu is just now finishing up his Cyber Core, a Civil of the Dune, and his Robo Facility, which is almost finished warping in. I think he's going to go for Dark Templars first, because he wants to be safe and he wants to hold off this frontal push here from Mong. He doesn't want to risk it, so he's going for Dark Templars. I'm 100% positive with the Templars Archives order being warped in, and he's adding on two more gateways in order to, of course, facilitate being able to make three Dark Templars there at the same time. Mong is still bottling up units there in the front, he's got Stim Upgrade there on the way, and he's got Medics now queued up as well, which should arrive here on the scene right about the time that the Stim Upgrade finishes up. Everything is timed pretty well. Mind from two Gazers there as well, scattered there on the way to detect and scan Dark Templars, got an Engineering Bay on the way as well to start building turrets with the same purpose really, to detect Dark Templars. These four cannons might not be enough to defend and hold this push from Mong, but Koreans are known to kind of push the envelope in terms of how close they are cutting it to the edge and falling off of it. They want to be as efficient as possible, and he believes this might just be enough. But that scan coming down here might spell some trouble, but our Templars are already on the way, and that scan being used means that there is no scan energy on that scan at the moment for Mong to defend against those incoming Dark Templars, which are very close to finishing up, and I think a, the scan will be on about 35 energy by the time those Dark Templars come out, and it looks like Mong feels something is not right here. He feels something isn't right, because he didn't see Robos here. He saw nothing here of significance in the front, so he picks up those Zealots first and lands them on the low ground to start killing those turrets here, but there's Marines already stimming into the Fray to, to stop those zealots from killing turrets, and which means that our temple is now gonna get loaded up. There's a marine here in between, and that means that this turret can shoot over the hill and damage that shuttle close to dying. It barely survives, and our temples are loaded here on the low ground. And it looks like Hamburg Sass, uh, Mong has scanned energy once again, so he's going to lose those dark templars. He tries to run them to safety, but they go down rather quick, and the Dark Templar investment there completely backfires and doesn't get any results, instead it turns into a waste of resources. Also lost the shuttle, lost four zealots, so that's a complete win scenario there for Mong, but the game is still in its early stages so we can't quite be sure um, how it's going to turn out, and actually he's sticking to the Dark Templars and he's just going to walk them straight into the base, kill that SV there in the front, there is no scan energy at the moment, there's raids there on the way to kill shuttles, but there's no shuttles at the moment that can be killed because the shuttle's hanging there in the front. 
He's putting them here though, he's trying to find shuttles to kill, but he can't find anything. At the same time though, Stark Templars are wreaking havoc inside the base, killing stuff here in the front. He's trying to build a new turret there in the front as well, while sneaking up behind and killing the scan there in the back. Mong is very quick at repairing it, and I think it will stay alive as the Marines are coming and stimming in to the fight to try and kill those Dark Templars, but more Dark Templars coming in through the front, and there's now 8 Dark Templars in total inside of Mong's base, with Mong might actually be taking a lot of damage here because those Dark Templars here are wreaking havoc. They're killing stuff pretty quick, running away here, trying to stay outside of the vision range. The scan there has been repaired. It's got scan energy, but it's a lot of Dark Templars, and I'm not sure whether those Marines can fight into all these Dark Templars here. The right one, two there in the front go down, so we've got four more alive right here on the side, which are at the moment still killing starports. And one starport went down, Mong wasn't quick enough for lifting it up. Also, turret here gonna go down, but the Dark Templars are getting spotted out by the turret here on the bottom side. He's gonna try to kill that turret very quick, he still has to scan energy. All he has to do is scan, he scans and kills all the Dark Templars there before losing more, with four more Dark Templars already coming in through the front, killing, killing turrets here on the bottom side. Now going for those Marines, although there are simply too many Marines, and this time around it looks like the investment into that last wave of Dark Templars doesn't get any real result but while all that was happening. Umbrick Sasu has built, I think, about 7 Dragoons, and he's got a couple more of them on the way for a total of 10. Zealous there being produced there as well, he's got Dragoon range on the range as well, and he's switching over into the Reaver while well, he has a probe in the shuttle. So his double Reaver in that shuttle, and I think that means he's going for a frontal attack while he is trying to take all the advantage he can off of that abuse with the Dark Templars, which has managed to keep Mong somewhat small in both army size and worker size because he was so focused on defending that he wasn't maximally and optimally building or spending his minerals. So as a result, he's rather small, he lost a lot of marines, lost a lot of tanks, lost a lot of buildings all across the space as well. So now it's all up to Hamburg Assassin to capitalize on that little advantage he built himself. He's building a lot of gateways here all across his base. He's not going for full on robo attack, although he's adding some more robos, but he wants to completely go for that mass gateway unit attack there on the front. I'm not sure if it's going to work though. It does appear it might it does appear it will be somewhat successful. This tank cannot shoot over the hill because it doesn't have vision past the hill. Very advantageous there for Humbrick's house. And he goes there in the front, drops those weavers there on the logo as well, which means that those Marines here are gonna have to run away for their lives. This attack here from Mong, from Humber Kasasu, might just be dealing a lot of damage, although Mong is already spreading out all of his units, putting his Marines there behind the buildings, and his tanks there behind the buildings as well. So it's gonna be pretty hard here for Humber Kasasu to get in behind all those buildings. Also, those tanks are spread out pretty well, but he's putting all the stuff there in the front, and he's going, trying to go in with his Zealots, but his Zealots getting blocked, but his Zealots getting on top of those tanks there. Nonetheless, no, they don't get on top of the tanks, the tanks are protected by the Marines really well, and the control here from Mong is absolutely amazing, because he's keeping himself alive somehow, and killing every single unit that Humber Kasasu sent in, with seemingly 60 or 70 less supply than his opponent, he somehow stays alive and on top of the game. A huge investment here for, for Humber Kasasu, but Humber Kasasu somehow still manages to clear out this entire frontal section, kills a lot of tanks, a lot of units, and I think he did what he intended to achieve, which was to keep Mong small and to deal damage while he himself keeps getting bigger and gets more units. In this case, he added on four more robos. He's now looking for a little bit to abuse here on the top side of the base. Still that Reaver there in the back, but Reaver's gonna get sniped by those Marines. Two Marines there paying with their lives, but the Zealots there getting on top of the Marines. The, the Raids there in the back also really do a great job with taking down those Zealots. Now the Zealots are turning away from the turrets onto the Marines, trying to chase the Marines into the narrow space there, closer to the command center, but they're getting blocked up by that single SCV there. A really great move there from Mong, although I'm not sure if he did it consciously, but he managed to defend with very little losses there. He's even added on 20 supply to his supply to his supply cap while all that was happening. So he's doing this really well. He's added on more tanks here, and the more tanks are being added down here on the bottom side, the harder it becomes for Humbrek Sasu to keep going in with those frontal attacks, with those gateway units, but he's gonna keep on trying nonetheless. His upgrades are on 0, 0, 0. He's got level one weapon on the way. He's got a lot of shuttles here on the bottom side, being filled up with Reavers as more Reavers are on the way. Follow attack happening here as Mom is trying to build a front, but he's got a lot of Reavers there being put into the bunkers. He's stimming them before putting them in the bunkers, but that while they're in the bunker, they still have some of that stim upgrade damage without losing their HP. The front here, though, looks to be going down, but once this front portion is down, Dragoons are going to get to fighting, 
and have to be fighting into these tanks here behind this frontal portion, which they definitely will not be able to. So Humber Kazasu, I think, will move up to the front portion, uh, the top portion here, and try try and deal damage there on the top side to avoid the damage from the tanks. And yes, no, he goes in for the tanks. He goes within the range of the tanks. He wanted to kill that one tank there, and then moves up to the top side there. But his goons are going down to Marines. They're stimming up to the top side, but he manages to nestle himself up in the top side there ready to deal more damage and keep Monk on his toes. Monk adding on a lot of barracks there in the front to help himself stay alive because he definitely needs more marines and he needs to be keep he needs to keep spamming marines out really quick really fast if he wants to stay alive here. Tanks though are protecting most of his base so all he has to do is add marines into the mix but whenever Zealous and Dragoons reach tanks they're already on low HP and those stint marines can take them down. Also do note he has level 1 attack damage on his marines a uh, mass shuttle drop here coming in. One shuttle gets taken down, but most of the reeves are here on the low ground. Tempest in the mix there as well. Tempest storm coming down on the SVs. All the SVs are going down. He's got 54 of them left. And the Zealots are wreaking havoc. Uh, turret gets taken down. More storms coming down on SVs. The reeves are trying to kill those SVs. They're in the back, but they're staying safe, staying alive. And the are here clearing, every, clearing out every single unit there on the low ground. And a frontal attack happened here at the same time as well, but it doesn't get much done. It looks like Mong somehow manages to stay alive despite losing, I think, about 20 SCVs there to that mass drop there from Humber Kasasu. Humber Kasasu is playing at such a high pace. For the past 5 minutes, he hasn't given Mong much rest. Or maybe even for the past 6 minutes, he's been trying to throw out non-stop attacks. And he's done so quite successfully, but it's more so because Mong has been doing such an insanely good job at defending. This is one of those action-packed games that I absolutely love, because this is actually two people going at it at their hardest and their best, and really trying to beat the other person with all their might. Ambrick Sasu once again preparing to go in through the front. There's Depots here now. He loads the barracks, reloads them with stint marines to get more damage out on those zealots. The tanks in the back are really doing a great job of taking down. But the storm's coming down here at the same time on top of the SCVs with a mass drop there coming in. And he actually has most of the SCVs that were still there. He had about 58 left. Now he only has 18 left. That's a huge loss there for Mom. That's definitely going to put him in a bind. Because now his economy is pretty much gone. He's got 18 SCVs and about 150 minerals, which is not that much. While he is facing a Hamburger Sasu Protoss with 84 probes, so all Hamburger Sasu now has to do is keep throwing out those attacks there on the front to try and break through. But these tanks here on the side though are making life pretty difficult for him, because his engineering bay is providing vision past the hill, which lets him shoot on these units that are rallied here to the front, which is going to take Hamburger Sasu a little while to re-rally to a better location. But I think he's going to load up these shuttles really quick and land them past the hill to kill those tanks there. But there's also still some raids, although he lost a lot of raids. He lost a lot of rates, it turns out, to that drop at 10 because there's courses that are in the mix and courses are amazing against rates. He flies in and loads here up on the bottom side, ready to storm on those marines, but the marines killing the Templars. Only one storm there comes down, a lot of zealots here now on the scene, ready to kill those tanks, ready to kill those turrets, but these tanks here on the bottom side are staying alive. And actually, most of the units have been killed because these bunkers here filled up with marines, got unloaded, stimmed up, and clean, cleaned out all the units that were present. And Hamburg Sasu doesn't get much done here except for clearing out a couple of tanks, but the investment did not equal the result. Also this one cloak raid here is staying outside of the cannon vision and killing those shuttles. That's that's some really great control there, a really great awareness from Mong to be able to do so much with a single a single raid that had 12 HP. Eventually it does go down, but I think it killed about five or six shuttles there above this portion here because he was staying outside of the detection range of that cannon. So Mong now back on 33 SCVs but he's still facing a maxed supply Hamburger Sasu who is continuously throwing out attacks non-stop. Once again he unloads all the bunkers, stims the marines and puts them back in. This is absolutely amazing play here from Mong but this drop here coming on top of the SCVs is going to be dealing damage although there's no temples or enemies but the front attack is happening here as well and the front is being broken through while the back here is Pretty much all the reeds are at the back, but he keeps his SCVs alive, although he's now only on 50 minerals. But the frontier has to be broken through, Zealots are in the base, the goons are coming in as well, and now it's going to be a very hard game for Mong, as he's once again lost the front, which gives uh, Humbug Sazu free access into the base. Also, almost no tanks on the bottom side, he's going to try to clear out those tanks on the bottom side, so he has a better passage into Mong's base. But Mong is playing really well around those five factors here, using that very narrow point here 
to make it hard for Zealots and the Goons to kind of follow the units that Mong has. And Mong somehow once again stays alive with only 85 supply. I'm not sure how he's doing it, but he's somehow doing it. He's doing the impossible. So once again, the drop is being loaded up. I think it's a couple of Templars. Two Templars and eight Zealots there ready to fly in. He's going to try to fly around and find a different path to fly in. But he's going to get detected by this Marine there. He changed direction. I think he's going to go in over the front here. Or over the top side right here. There's a wide open space here. There's a pretty good path to drop right there. As long as he has those Corsairs to tank for the shuttles. Once again, Zealots are coming in. He's going to go for the top side. He's going to get try to... He's going to try to fight himself a path with those Zealots for those shuttles to go in through. But there's simply too many marines ready to snipe those shuttles, so he's simply chasing those marines around in the base and keeps the shuttles alive. No, two shuttles died there in the end. He lost, didn't lose the Templars. Templars are still alive. So Monk is, this is actually the best Terran play I've seen in a long time. I've never seen someone surviving quite like this. This is the impossible. He's doing the absolute impossible. I mean, I don't think he's going to win though. I'll be honest with you, I don't think he's going to win. Because he is still pretty far behind and all it takes is for Hamburg Assassin to throw out one good attack, which he is at the moment preparing. He's preparing a mass shuttle drop here, and I think he's going to fly in with this drop at the same time while flying in with this drop here from the bottom side. So he has two attacks coming in from two different directions. And this one has the storm, so he's coming in, the shuttle gets sniped, but this one's going to fall the bottom. He's coming in at the same time, all the Marines are away, but look at this, he is not getting distracted. Although all the Marines are going down to the reaver, but he did lose almost all the shuttles there. So no, the workers once again stay alive, he's on 51 of them. And he's very slowly crawling himself back into this game. And this latch here is being an absolute nightmare. Monk's Marine use, Monk's Marine control is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. Hamburg Sasu is doing all the right things, although you could argue he could have switched over into carriers long ago, but carriers of course also take a while to build, and he does not want to give Mong room to breathe, which he hasn't given him, but Mong has created room to breathe, all by himself, by somehow managing to stay alive, although those Templars here are gonna get so- No, he dodges all the storms and loses only a single read to the storm, although also the Zealots here are not gonna get much done, as they all get mowed down. Hamburg Assassin is on 2-2 upgrades, but I'm barely noticing that he has 2-2 upgrades because his units are going down so quick to the stint marines there. There's only two medics here in the mix. He's now loading up tanks to put them up on the hill, I'm sure, to even get more security down for himself. He's somehow doing it. I'm, I'm absolutely not sure how he is doing this. His multitasking, his focus is so pristine. I've been praising Mong for the past... 15 minutes, but it's been so amazing to watch how he's doing this, but I think this might be it, because there's a lot of Templars there in that shuttle, and as those Marines get stormed, this game is going to turn around. Yeah, the Marines are going to get stormed, he cannot micro that many Marines at the same time, he's trying his hardest though, he's on 134 supply against 200 supply, and these Templars are still going to keep on storming those Marines, and as those Marines go down, the tanks are no longer protected from um, those Zealots and those Dragoons, although Marines are coming in from the back where the command center is no longer protected. He might be able to do this with those marines, but those upgrades on the dragoons are simply too strong for the marines to really do anything against. Look at how slow these dragoons go down against so many marines, but he's managing to kill them in the end. He's managing, well this Templar almost has energy, but look at this, another storm is coming in, although he's just going to unload Templars. No, he's going to go for the minerals. He's going to go for the minerals. He's flying around the Marines. He's using his Zealous S support, and the storm comes down on the SVs, and he gets a lot of SV kills there. I think about 30 SV kills there in total, but the Templar almost made it to the SVs, but nope, he didn't quite get there, although this Archon is being morphed. Archon is not yet going down because the Zealous are taking fire away from the Archon, which means the Archon can now go and try to kill. No! Mon calls the GG after one of the hardest fought battles I've seen on fastest map in my life. I have not quite seen a game as action-packed as this one. This was absolutely sublime. I'm so happy I selected this replay. Oh, what a blast. What a blast. Non-stop action, great execution of play, of, of, of plans and play styles. Mong barely holding on for 15 minutes or so, he somehow did it, well he didn't do it in the end, but he managed to prolong this game for such a long period of time. 
So yeah, really well played by both players. That's a win for Hamburg Isasu. And now I'm going to go for um, one more game. I'm going to go for game number two between these two players from the same day. You could even call it the same series, but I don't really want to cast this series because this series is like two hours long and it's way too long for me to go and sit through and cast just for my sanity. It's not doable. Though I might split them up into two separate videos... Yeah, I'm gonna, no, I'm not. I'm just going to pause it here and load up game number two. Alright, so of course we want to see the races reverse, because we don't want to see the same players on the same races twice. But this time around we have Mong here on the bottom right corner playing the Orange Protoss. And his opponent, of course, Hamburg Assassin here on the yellow Terran. On the middle top of the map, a pretty tough spot on the map to defend. But he might be able to do it. I believe in him. Although Mong has become a really amazing Protoss player on fastest map. There are not many are equal to his strength and ability on Protoss. But he is not as good as some of the other players. That is without a doubt. But he is without a doubt the best Terran player. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. He starts off with one of my favorite build orders, a Nexus, in, well, a Pylon Nexus. And then, of course, you fold up with a Forge, a Pylon there in the front, and then a Gateway and two Cannons in the front. And you scout with this probe that made those two Cannons here in the front. Then you add on two Assimilators. Once the Gateway finishes, you add on a Cyber Core. And you can probably make a Zealot as well, just for safety measures and safety reasons. Or for scouting reasons, but he decides against it that he makes a lot of pylon, and he sends his six probes to the gas. Although he starts off with three, and he'll send three more a little bit later on. Right right there, there you go. Umber Kassasa started off with a plus one command center, it appears, followed up by three barracks, which is a little bit risky in the case your opponent goes for a two gateway star, or for a mid-built proxy gateway. But the chances of that happening with Mong are very small, and I think Humber Kassasa knows, so that's why he added on that plus one command center. Then three barracks, then of course an academy because he needs stim upgrade, he needs marines, well I mean medics, and possibly fire bats as well. So the academy they're finishing up, stim upgrade soon to be on the way and once he can afford it. He is going for a very early factory there as well, so he might be planning on going for a tank drop or maybe for a frontal tank push. Not too sure, he's got a lot of options there in that regard. Got a Citadel of Dune already up and running for Mong, which means he's going for Dark Templars. He's also adding on a third Nexus, which is not something we often see, but we're seeing it right here, right now. Mong is going for a very heavy economy build order while trying to defend himself with Dark Templars, which might be a great option here. He's added on one more cannon to the front instead of going for four, like Humber Kassasa did last game around. Long Marines are being balled up in the front. Medics are on the way. Stir upgrade almost finished up, well, halfway done. Factory is finished now, though. So that is all fine and dandy. He's got a scan being re uh, built there as well. He's mining two simulators, refineries actually. Simulators are the Protoss unit instead. And yeah, he's going for two Dark Templars. He cannot afford them yet at the moment though, so he's still mining a couple of those minerals. Or oh, a gas, I mean. Oh, and this might be a good cue here for Hamburg Asasu, because he sees only three cannons in the front, he's got about, I think, ten marines, and he's got more marines there on the way for a total of thirteen. Mong is very quickly scrambling to add on another cannon in the front, he's got two robots here being built as well, but I think Mong, Hamburg Asasu is going to go in and try to force his way through with those medics, but he might actually have gone in a little bit too early, although he gets one cannon down, two cannons going to go down as well, he's got a couple more marines, but more marines are reinforcing the marines already there, he's going to kill that last cannon, although he's trying to run through, he made a mistake, he made a micro mistake, which doesn't often happen with Hamburg Asasu, but he breaks through in the end, more marines there on the back, now, in the back, on the way, Dark Templar is about to be spawning, and that might be too many Dark Templars for these Marines to handle, although it's only a single Dark Templar, but I do think he doesn't have scan energy at the moment, because he used a scan to detect or check how many cannons are wearing in the front, which now means this Dark Templar is going to wreak havoc on those Marines, and the Marines are just going to be thrown away. So all he gets is three cannons, and pretty much nothing else. There's one more Dark Templar here on the middle trying to cut off the supply line, but Humbrick's house is already retreating his Marines back to his base, he's building a turret there as well, trying to protect it with Marines, so everything is pretty much going as standard, really. 
Humber goes out to tries to break through the front, he probably breaks through, or he wastes his marines, one of the two options really. And then of course Monk survives it. It's worth the shot because sometimes you can kill the pattern here in the front, sometimes the, the progress is not going for our Templars, which means you have free reign in their base. But, ooh, the Dark Templar made it through before the turret there in the front finished, which now means he's gonna lose some of his precious SCVs. He does not have scan, he does have scan, but he has no turret there in the back. He's gonna have to scan and kill the Dark Templar because the Dark Templar's gonna run away, but he's gonna run straight into a turret that's being built. But the Dark Templar stays alive, the turret there is not yet finished. Right, but he's just gonna kill Marines instead of killing the SCV there. He wants to kill as many Marines as he can, so that once that turret does finish, the Marines cannot kill the Dark Templar because there's simply too few of them. Though, is he gonna do it? 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 No, he doesn't do it. The Dark Templar there stays alive, so absolutely amazing choice there from Mong. Also, the turret there in the front has gone down because there were no Marines there to protect it, which now means that the Dark Templars are wreaking havoc inside of Hamburg's house's base, and this is looking exactly like last game, although Hamburg's house is having a bit of a harder time to handle those Dark Templars. So now he's gonna kill those Dark Templars in the front, although one of them runs away as the scan duration ends. It's still on pretty much, it's got pretty good HP on it left. This one's gonna go down there as well, though it's within range of this turret, so this one is gonna pay for it with his life. He's got tanks on the way, but he has nothing to put into this dropship. <coughs> so two depots here in the front going down, which means that Hamburger House is close to being supply blocked, but he is not yet supply blocked. Also, three shells have finished up here inside of Monk's base. He's got dark, uh, High Templars on the way. He's got Storm Upgrade on the way as well, or already finished up. He's got Weapon Upgrade for Zealots and Ground Units on the way. He's got Air armor for his air on the way as well to help fly his shuttles in. And of course, I think he has already finished shuttle speed. He's also building a lot of cannons here to protect his probes, to protect his next eye. So we're not going to be seeing any successful tank drops coming down on the probes. Mon has truly mastered the art of Protoss, it appears. So yeah, tank drop tries to go in. Tank drop goes down before it even gets close to his destination. That gets shut down pretty, pretty damn well. So at the moment we're looking at 74 supply for Hamburger's house. He does not have a choke, but he's going to build a choke very soon. But at the moment I think he's focused on going for drop defense. Because he scanned this frontal portion here and he sure knows that this is looking like a combination you would make for a drop. He's got 8 Zealots, 4 Templars, 3 Shuttles. That's going to be a drop. He's waiting for 2 more shuttles to finish up and waiting for another wave of gateway units to not finish up. He's not making another wave. But he's got more Corsairs there being built and on the way he's adding and filling out his entire base there with a lot of gateways. And he's not going for consecutive quick rapid fire attacks, unlike Humbrick's house did last game, but he wants to build a proper strong attack that can pretty much assuredly deal a lot of damage. He's splitting up the, the shuttles because he wants to use this one as a single drop, then use these two sh uh, shuttles that are still being built as another drop. So he's going for three shuttle drops, although shuttle speed has not yet finished, he forgot shuttle speed, but it's still now on the way. So when I said I was probably finished, I was wrong, it wasn't finished yet. Got armor for his uh, zealots now on the way as well, and shields as well, well I should say gateway units. Because it accounts for dragoons as well, and dark templars too, and of course pretty much everything that spawns from a gateway. See so a lot of factors now coming down for Hamburger Sauce, so he's got... 5 barracks as is tradition on a 12 or 6 spawn location. 2 armors there as well for upgrades for his tanks and his goliaths and vultures. I could call them mech upgrades I guess. Way easier, he's got all the here strewn about his command center so he can stim them into a direction that he needs them to. And some tanks here in the front, marines in the front, and a wall there to keep units out. Alright, so Humbrick's house has his shuttle speed, well, I mean Mong has his shuttle speed finished up. And he's gonna fly in with two shuttles at the same time. One from the right, one from the left, both angled in from the bottom side. So one goes in first to distract and pull the Marines away, and another wing comes in at the same time. But I think Mong is gonna have to pull off a miracle here, although he might pull off a miracle because no SVs are going down. Just for a lot of Marines there, though, but all the Templars do get shut down, so go down as well. And the mass Marine stim into the Mong units do the trick. Really well played there from Humber Kasasu. The front there, nothing really happened. He's trying to build cannons there on top or well, in front of the base. And he might succeed. So four Reavers have finished up. He's got two shuttles. He's got more Corsairs that are on the way to help them fly in. Oh, he's got Arbiters on the way. He's going for very quick Arbiters. I really like that option. He's building cannons here on the sides as well to try and deny 
side vision for Humberger Sasu, so these buildings cannot fly out all that far. And yeah, we've got tanks being loaded up onto the hill here to try and stop this from happening, but I think those cannons might actually be spaced just far... No, I'm wrong. We have to space them here, but that's a little bit too far away. It will still provide uh, Humberger Sasu with a lot of side vision, so that's not going to happen. So 170 supply here, Humberger Sasu is doing significantly better than Mong did last game. Although, do keep in mind, Mong is going for a completely different approach. More controlled, less frontal attacking, less pressure. But he's going for pretty strong shuttle drops. And he can unload this anywhere he wants. I think he's going to try to unload it very close to the depots. Because he doesn't have a Corsair to assist it in flying in. And he's forced to unload, I think, about two or four Zealots are up on the hill. And he's going to... Ooh, a huge hit there on the Marines. Those four Zealots are wreaking havoc. But the tanks are up on the hill did a lot of damage to the Reavers. But the Reavers are taking down a lot of depots. That's going to be one more shot. Ooh, that's four depots there, barely staying alive. He did get Hubbard's house into supply block there, though. He killed a lot of ground forces there as well. He went down, oh, he went down from 180 to 147 units there in total. And he's going to have to build new depots very quickly, but another drop is already being loaded up or prepared here for Mong. He's waiting for his shuttles, although he does not have shuttles at the moment. He's building Reavers instead. So it might actually take a while, but he has those Arbiters finished. He's got Recall finished, although where is the Arbiter Tribunal? He has Stasis on the way, I think Arbiter Recall is already finished, he's now also getting Interceptor Capacity. He's pretty much tacking every single tech tree that he needs at the same time, while also repairing attacks, and do note, we're only 12 minutes and a half in. So the Arbiters are going to be flying in very soon. It looks like... He's going to try to EMP the Arbiters with his Vessel, because he did scan those Arbiters Let's see if he's going to hit that one or not. He's also throwing away Zealous because he needs more supply space because he simply has too many units. Tess is going to keep hanging there while until it has 100 energy. These Zealous are just going to throw their lives away to clear up supply space. And I think he's going to try to do a stacking or clipping recall. Alright, that, uh, that one got EMP'd, but this one still has energy. It's going to take a while before it has enough. And he managed to break through the depots there in the front. Because the tanks here, of course, help with taking down those depots. Also, I think he's going to keep on adding buildings to the side. He's going to build a Nexus here. This looks to me like a carrier proxy base. I'm going to be, we're going to be seeing a lot of Stargates there. So there's one thing I dislike about Monk's approach here. He's giving Humbrickus House a lot of time to build up and fortify himself. And Humbrickus House in a fortified position is very difficult and hard to deal with. Because he knows how to defend, he knows how to build, he knows exactly what to do, and he's doing all the right steps, preparing himself for those mass attacks and those recalls going to be coming in from Mong. But first, of course, where did the Arbiter go? Where did the Arbiter go? Where did the Arbiters go? So he's going to go in with a mass shield attack first. He's got one shield hanging here on the side, with which he can spot an opening in Humber Kassas' base. Um, well, I'm wrong. He can't see anything. But he flies in nonetheless, and there's no anti-air units to stop this from flying in. He does have a lot of tanks, marines, everything screwed about here in the back. But that's a lot of Reavers, a lot of Templars there on the scene. But actually, everything gets killed the moment it unloads. And the mass drop attempt to try and kill the command center doesn't achieve anything, really. So more cannons being built on the sides. Carrier proxy base here built, being built on the side as well. I think he's going to build a lot of um, shield batteries here too, because that's something he likes to do. So he can always retreat, heal up the shields on his carriers, and fly back into the fight. A lot of cannons on the middle as well. We're only fifth, uh, 14 and a half minutes in, and he's already built this much. And I think he's only done about 4 or 5 attacks, none of which have really done much. Except, of course, those Dark Templars in the early game. But not quite the results I was hoping for, or he would have hoped for. I personally always hope for a really well defended game by the Terran, and this game has been really well defended. And I think Hamburg South is very soon, very soon going to contemplate attacking, because he is pretty much maxed out. So a lot of upgrades finished, and a lot of upgrades on the way. He's already done 1, 2, 4 his tank, soon to be 2, 3. His Marines are on 0-1, but he 
lifted all of his barracks, so he's no longer going to be adding on marines. He has, I think, about it's about 12, and I think he's going to add on a couple more here. So he'll be having about 16 factories in total. He's got 12 starports there as well. His base looks a bit messy. Let's see, there's a lot of people here. A lot of open space here as well, but I think he's just going to keep on building more and more command centers so we can start killing depots and add more space in his base for buildings though. Mass recall coming in here on the bottom side, on the side there, a lot of zealots there in the corner, but they're having trouble moving through these bottlenecks and there's a lot of siege of tanks on the side as well. Templars might arrive on the scene to kill those SCVs there, but I don't think he's going to make He's going to kill a lot of marines here though. Archon there also wreaking havoc. The upgrades are in 2 2 3 for him as well, so both players are doing an amazing job with their upgrades. But Mon doesn't really get that far here because he was facing a vessel and pretty much had to call an early recall without flying too deep in. If he had managed a recall here, he would have been able to storm, maybe. But of course, there was a vessel here ready to EMP it. He even had two vessels ready to EMP. So rather safe than sorry because not recalling at all is worse than, well, recalling. So, but because a lot of units from Hamburg House have been moved to the back, he's now going for a very small frontal attack because he needs to open up supply space to build those carriers here on his carrier proxy base. Also adding a lot of cannons here on the side. Great play here from Mong. Great decision making. Although he is not as frequent with his attacks, he is doing a lot of work. Although this does give Hamburg a little bit more time to rebuild and recover while trying to deal with that frontal abuse here. Because honestly, everything is in the back. Everything is in the back. He's got seven Valkyries and he's got one more. Nope, that's a dropship. I thought it was a Valkyrie, but he only has seven of them. Does have a lot of Goliaths there in his base though? I think that's about 12 Goliaths. Well, that's one, two, three, four, 13 Goliaths instead of 12, 15, 16. Well, a lot of them are spawning. I'm completely wrong. There's so many of them spawning right here right now. He's got about 20 of them, which should be enough to fight against all those carriers they're gonna be spawning here on the top side getting on more gateways as well for dark templars or is he gonna go well yeah i think dark templars for dark archons for mind control although mong is not really a person to use mind control he prefers to win with protoss alone so probably making them for templars so you can storm those valkyries if those valkyries do come out to attack those carriers also a photo push happening here at the same time from hot because he knows he has to start moving out also do note that Hamburg Sasu does not know this proxy base there exists, although he might have scanned it, but I missed it. He knows. He knows it exists. He's going to the side there. He, let's see. He scanned the front here, so he's only arbiters, but sees no units under those arbiters, so he knows something is up. So he goes to the side to clear out this proxy base, but he's gonna run straight into all those carriers, which means he's gonna have to turn tail. No, he's not gonna turn tail, he's gonna commit to the fight. That's 12 carriers here. 12 carriers are pretty darn strong. Valkyries coming into the fight as well. There's only six of them here, though. The well, Goliaths are trying to fight back, but not doing a great job. There's the Arbiter here as well with Stasis Energy, and those Arbiters are stacked up. He's gonna have to split them up really quick or run away. He's not in time. He's a little bit too late there. Oh, the Arbiter goes down there. A small little mistake there from Mong. Tried to see past the hill, but paid for it with his life. But he's clearing out the tanks here on the side here, though. So he's doing a great job in that regard. And he is. Now finally engaged in a full-on slobber knocker with Hamburger Sasu. It's going to be carriers into Goliaths and Valkyries and Marines, although the Marines are going to be cleared out very quick very soon, but the Goliaths are going to be fighting against those carriers for a pretty long time. I expect, I expect an EMP to be coming out soon on these carriers, although the vessels are still there in the back. Hamburger Sasu is scrambling to make new units very quick. He sacrificed a couple of his SCVs there because he had a lot of minerals, but I think he's going to Hmm, not too sure actually. I thought it was might replace a couple of his lost uh, SCVs there to keep up his, his income because his gas is quite low, but he isn't going for it. He's going to stay on 53 SCVs instead. He's mostly going to make Valkyries to fight against those carriers, but I think the Arbiters from Mong that are now moving from his base to the middle to the top corner here are going to put a wrench into those Valkyrie plants, and Goliath might have been a better option. Do note though, he does have almost all of his upgrades finished up. He's got level 3 for his air, almost fit level 2, not level 3, he's level 3 for his ground, almost finished up though. There, level 3 armor for his mech. Carriers coming in, the Reavers unloading on the low ground here as well. There's nothing to kill those Reavers there on the low ground because there's no tanks anywhere near. So these are just going to kill whatever they can see. They're going to kill for fineries, they're going to kill SCVs, they're going to kill room. 
command centers, they're gonna go depots, they're gonna go armories as well, because the armories are really close here to the side. And there comes another carrier, he's gonna stasis a couple of Valkyries, the Valkyries have not been spread out, but I think he still has enough Valkyries to fight against the Interceptors, though the carriers are being marked with there expertly, the Interceptors are never returning back to the carriers, he's gonna kill the armories here now, which is his mostly Humberkenstein's only defense against those carriers, he's gonna have to build a couple of new ones, the carriers still dancing back and forth, but the carriers are very slowly losing their HP, but they do more damage than they're taking, but their stasis there are gonna come down on Arbiters, he got a couple of them, not a lot of them, at least he's got a couple of them, still dancing back and forth with those carriers. Valkyries there, tanks have been moved to kill the Glyzer the, the on the low ground, I mean the Reavers on the low ground. But in the end, Mon, after a very short stint in Hamburg's base, is forced to retreat, but he killed I think about 10 of them. Turrets, 4 armories, a couple of SCVs there on the refinery as well, almost killed the command center there too. But I think there's gonna be a new armory somewhere inside of Hamburger Sasu's base, although he hasn't built it yet. He's focusing on the photo push here first. There's a Dark Archon. <coughs> he's, he's sacrificing a lot of probes. He's got 88 probes, he's got a lot of minerals, a lot of gas, so he can afford to throw away some of his probes. He can even afford to stop mining gas completely. But first, let's see how far Hamburger Sasu gets before replacing his armory, which he still has not replaced. Because he's very confident in his ability to fight off those carriers with all these Valkyries. But another stasis comes down on... Oh, that's a lot of Valkyries there. Stasis by the Arbiter. Two stasis coming down, which now means that the Valkyries are going to have a tough time fighting against those carriers. There's only nine Valkyries, and the Valkyries are just going to get focused down by the carriers instead of... Instead of other methods of attack, although he's going straight for the carriers, and look at the carriers melting. Although all the Valkyries have gone down, no, there's still a couple of Valkyries here on the scene, the carriers are being, ta being taken down pretty damn quick, he's lost two, no, he's lost three of them, and a lot of them are low HP, Goliaths are entering the fray there as well, but they're having trouble reaching the carriers physically. The Valkyries have gone down, but a lot of Valkyries are about to be unstasis, and a frontal push is still happening here over the middle of the map to try and tear through all those cannons, so we might still be seeing a Humberg Sasu victory here, though the chances are quite slim, because he still does not have that armory. But the Valkyries have been unstasis, which now means the carriers are not going to be quick enough to run away back to safety. Is he going to get them back to safety? Oh, he gets them back to safety just by the smallest margin because he started using the shield batteries to restore the shields and kept those carriers alive. But do note, the carriers now have about 300 HP less, well 250 HP less than they usually do, so they might go down pretty quick and he still has to wait for new carriers to spawn, which is going to which is going to be a lengthy process. He's got seven of them on the way, but this gives Humberg has a lot of time to simply A move through all these cannons. Monk is trying to build a lot of new ones as quick as he can. Carriers once again here coming in, he recalled some of them Reavers onto the low ground, but there's tanks here as well, though he stasis more tanks, so he cannot kill this Reaver there in the back. But once again, the carriers have been scared away. The Reaver there not achieving much, Hamburg's house is still completely fine, he's building new armories here on the side, so he built new armories in the end. The Hamburg's house is still pushing over the map here, but there's a lot of cannons being built here, very haphazardly, because Mom is trying to buy himself as much time as he needs and can. Can is being built here on the side to help fight against those Valkyries, and more Valkyries are simply being constructed here and being sent to the corner to help defend against those carriers. More carriers are on the way. I think he's got seven queued up. Yes, seven queued up. He's got four Arbiters there as well for Stasis, and those Stasis might actually change the game because those carrier, those Valkyries by Humber, by Humber Kasasu have never been properly spread out. But even against four four Arbiters, spreading them out might not. Six Arbiters, six Arbiters. That's so many of them. It might not be enough. So he has another couple of Reavers being recalled in, I think. He's gonna move closer to... No, he goes for a Stasis instead. There's no Reavers whatsoever, although it's gonna look like a base trade here. It's going to look like a base trade. Hamburger's house is trying to push through. He's trying to push through. Is he gonna do it? Mong is going for the command center, although I think he can't target it. Which means these Valkyries are having a good time fighting up those carriers with already low HP. And look at the... The Halo Rockets, well, they're, they're still looking pretty healthy because the shields are being regen. but look at this. Mong is going to have to make a choice. Is he going to turn back and protect his base, or is he going to try to end Hamburger Sasu once and for all? This is going to be a very, very close call. Hamburger Sasu is pushing through the front here. 
Mong is still sitting here with his carry. He's got 12 of them. But so is Humber Gassasso hanging here with 12 Valkyries and 7 Goliaths. More Goliaths have been spawned. More Valkyries are on the way. Pushing to the front here still. He's trying to make a lot of cannons here as well. But I think Humber Gassasso is going to pull through. He's moving through. He's going to kill those cannons there without seizing up. He's just going to move through A, attack them. But it's fight happening here is to save them as well. Dark Templars have spawned. This is going to be a very hectic fight. He stasis is all the Valkyries. No scan has come down on the tank on the Dark Templars there yet. He's just trying to push through as fast as he can. But he's in the process of losing his command center here. But he can't attack the command center because he's being covered by other command centers. Which now means the Valkyries here are going to go down for, um, for Mong. But is it going to work? No, he lost too many Valkyries. And too many Valkyries are stuck in stasis. But these Goliaths on the lower are doing a lot of damage. All these Valkyries. Ah! He didn't scan. He... He did have scan energy. No, he had no scan energy. He lost all of his scans. He lost all of his scans and couldn't... He had to keep scanning here to detect the, the carriers. Because they were under Arbiter protection. But in the end, he also loses all of his tanks that were inside of Mong's base. Because Mong simply kept making more Dark Templars as the units here were taking down the entire frontal portion. But in the end, I do think that... Oh, he lost the command center in the end as well. And we've got more carriers on the way here for Mong. Harbor Kassasu is supply stuck at the moment, but I think he's going to move out and try to push through with those tanks, because that's going to be his last chance. He either has to push through with his tanks right here, right now, and try to end Mong as soon as he can, or Mong is going to win this game. Because once the, that new wave of carriers here finishes up, this game might be over for Harbor Kassasu. So out he goes. Well, of course, he's moving across the map. Ready to kill. Oh no, he's got a mass reaver drop here on the side as well, prepared while we were all focusing on the carriers and the tank push from Hamburg Sasu and the defense from Hamburg Sasu against Monk's aggression. But look at this, reavers being loaded up. It's a lot of shuttles there. A lot of courses there as well. But look at this, he does have a lot of Valkyries, but he does not have many SCVs. He only has 44 SCVs. But a push happening here in the front before the cannons have been rebuilt, the local of cannons have been rebuilt there. But he lost a mass reaver here on the side, and there's nothing there to defend because there's no tanks left in his base, which means he's going to kill all of the depots here on the side. He's moving a couple of tanks into position to try and take care of the reavers. But the aggression from Humber Kassasu is actually backfiring here as Mong is going to have an easy time killing all of the depots, all of the armories which he has already killed. All of the depots are being built on the other side but there's carriers on the other side which are going to kill this entire left side as well. So the right side is being taken down and soon the right side, left side is going to be taken down as well. Who will win this base race? There's no scans. There's no scans in the base here for Humber Kassasu. There's a lot of Dark Templars here. He managed to stasis the vessel here in the defense and he manages to kill all the tanks there with the mass Dark Templars. He does throw out a last scan before the scans all go down, but it will not be enough. The Dark Templars are simply too great in number. And that, well, these two are gonna go down, but more Dark Templars are already on the way. And Mong is showing an absolutely amazing gameplay here. And Humber Kassasu simply cannot cope with it. He cannot keep up with him. Mong is two steps ahead of him. Although, where did all those carriers go? Oh, there they are. Not my bad. Uh, so he goes in with the carriers once again. There's 12 of them in total. There's a lot of Velgers in the base as well, but not that many because most of them are on the other side. Humbrick's house is running out of minerals because he only has 15 SCVs. He's trying to fight against those carriers, but another Arbiter comes in to stasis the Arbiter. Who stasis the Valkyrie is going to move forward. And he's stacking up all his Valkyries by accident there as well. And that's two stasis there on the Valkyries. Which now means that it's going to be impossible to defend against his mass carrier in his base. He's going to try to replace a lot of his lost units there to try and fight this, I think. Or he might just call the GG. But this is definitely a win here for Mong. Yes, Mong wins after 29 minutes and 35 seconds. And that is one of the most exciting second halves of a game I've seen in a while. Like, the previous game was exciting for other reasons. This game was just such a beautiful Protoss here from Mong. He is a really good, great builder. He's, I think this is one of the best Protosses I have seen. I mean, the late game Protoss from Mong is insane. He is doing so many things at the same time and going for such well executed attacks. He is, he is out of this world. He's out of this world. He builds so many things. This is absolutely amazing. I am so impressed by Mong from both games. He played an amazing Terran in the first game and an amazing Protoss in the second game. And for once, I'm not mad that a Protoss wins because this was just so well executed by him. 
I mean, I would have loved to see Hamburg's Hasse win this one. It would have been awesome as well. But pff, this game was a mad one. This was an absolute mad one. That second half was one of the best second halves I have ever seen in a Protoss versus Terran. So yeah, thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed it. The score comes out to about 1-1 because, well, both players win as Protoss, which is not that common. But there's two games that happened prior to, prior to this one, which I didn't want to recast because there was something wrong with my microphone settings. So those replays are lost. But in those two games, Terran won both times. So the first game, Mong won. The second game, Humber Kassasa won as Terran. I might um, throw them up. Maybe. Well, the first game is not as exciting. The second game was rather exciting, but I don't want to recast. I'm sorry. I don't want to recast. But nonetheless, this game is over. This series is over, pretty much. 1-1 one, one score. Woohoo. But, you know, who cares? They just played two amazing games. That's all that matters. And I had a lot of fun watching them and casting them. This was honestly one of the most exciting casts for me personally that I've done in quite a while. So thank you for watching. And I hope you come back for another video very soon. And now I'm going to hunt for a thumbnail. Well, you know, we, we can hunt for a thumbnail together. Although that's kind of boring. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. I'm going to end it here.